Welcome to another broadcast from Victory Church Odessa with Gian, Tracy, and all the wonderful church members. Today, you will listen to the Word of God, wonderful worship and praise music, and the practical application from Scripture for your daily life. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith as you reflect on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our pastor, Gian. Ezra, prophet or priest? This is the Worship Service 364. And before we go to the message, I want to invite you to download the bulletin. You can do it going to the website, pchurch.us. Look for the tab bulletins and search for the date, October 15th. Or you can simply, using your phone camera, point towards the QR code and click on the link to download the bulletin with the scriptures of the teaching of this morning. We invite you to follow our 24-7 broadcast. You can do it by going to the video link, which is giantv.magiancarlo.com or audio, victoryradio.us. 24-7 of programming available for you. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not ruin the produce of your land and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit says the Lord of Armies. Today, October 15, 2023, in our message, Ezra, prophet or priest, we are going to reflect on the scripture and we begin reading one verse the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Readings that come from the easy to read version and we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this reflection. The scripture says, We have freedom now because Jesus Christ made us free. So stand strong in that freedom. Don't go back into slavery again. That is exactly the case of this particular moment in history. Where we are going to reflect is a section of the history of the people of Israel. Ezra was one of those protagonists here. But I mean, let me ask you this question. If you go back to a place that means a lot to you and you see that place in ruins, what's the feeling? What is the feeling? Well, that is precisely what happened to the Israelites when they noticed that Jerusalem was destroyed. It was near the year 450 before our Lord Jesus Christ what uh, was happening there, the king of Persia, Cyrus, which, by the way, they spoke Aramaic, he was in those days going through a lot. And one of the concerns was precisely the Jews, people of Israel. So do you know why did Israel become slaved to Babylon? The answer is, to punish them for idolatry and disobedience. My friend, we always, Christians, we always put the emphasis on the grace of God, but sometimes we forget the punishments that come for disobeying and especially for idolatry. The people of Israel lived it not once, several times, and they became slaves to Babylon. It is sad, right? You know that Israel lived three exodus during those years. And I'm not talking about the exodus that they lived way before during the times of Moses. You remember Moses and Joshua, right? When Israel was leaving Egypt. I'm not talking about that. Right now we are talking about three different moments in the history of Israel 
where they are going out from Babylon, where they were slaves, again, for the same reasons. Disobedience, and especially idolatry. The three different exodus in those years began with Zerubbabel, because they wanted to rebuild the temple. The second exodus during those days was uh, to reestablish worship. Ezra was the leader of that group. And it's part of what we are studying today in the scripture. But there is a third group led by Nehemiah. The purpose of this group was to build the wall. So today we are going to study this and what happened during those years. There are three main sections that I want you to evaluate with me of during this, those days, which are what happened with the enemies of Israel? What was the arguing between the parties there in God's victory? And you are going to love it because somehow applies to us. The enemy is attacking, and then we have the opportunity to argue and talk about those situations. And when we rely on the Lord, he is going to show up and the victory of God will come upon you. Okay? So all this began precisely with a letter. A letter. Maybe you still write letters. <laughs> Do you? Maybe you still receive letters. Letters are not too popular in these days. You know, mail is uh, actually decreasing for a lot of people. They are not interested in sending anything in the mail. Back in the day, they, of course, they didn't have email or text messages or anything like that. It was any communication. It was uh, done through letters. So here is one of those letters in Ezra chapter 4, verse 12, first section, tells us about this letter. The enemies of Israel sending a letter. They are very clever. <laughs> they discover what the Jews were doing. So this is what the letter says. Part of it. King Artaxerxes, we wish to inform you that the Jews you sent from there are now in Jerusalem. They are trying to rebuild that Terrible city. <laughs> the people there have always rebelled against other kings. Isn't it interesting, my friend? The Jews trying to rebuild their city, trying to rebuild the temple, because it's what they were called to do by God. But there are enemies. You know, in, in today's world, we see... Attacks against the church. And you know there are different levels of attacks in different types of churches. I am sure that you are enjoying watching on your big TV all type of shows. And as a believer, I am sure that you are enjoying the teachings, the worship service from different churches and different pastors' teachings. I, I'm sure of that. Because you are a believer, you, you are curious. You want to know what are they saying and all that. And you will discover that among all the churches, there are going to be different messages, of course, different type of interpretations to the passages. But mainly, you are going to realize that there are churches and pastors, leaders, that they put emphasis on certain things. Sometimes the emphasis is about having fun. Let's have fun. Being a Christian is a good thing. And of course it is. But the emphasis is everything is all right. You don't worry about anything. You're just going to enjoy your life and be prosperous and conquer. And, you know, the happy message. That's one type of church and messages you will hear. On the other hand, you will find the other type of message, which is the type of message that makes you feel really bad because it's about criticizing and 
attacking, condemning believers and making them feel awful, making them feel uncomfortable. And those are probably the two sides or the two extremes, if you like. It is or too superficial or is too, <laughs> what is the word? Condemning. Yeah. Making you feel judged. And the truth of the matter is that although we need to hear all the great things and positive aspects of church, we also need to be confronted with the changes that the Lord is expecting from us. Keeping that balance is, is healthy for you. Now, from the spiritual standpoint, I want you to think of uh, the evil forces. Do you think that the evil forces, forces are going to be attacking more messages that are to make you feel good, that everything is all right? Or do you think that evil is going to attack more the messages that are more confrontational? You understand the point. Well, churches are like that. And the thing is, the more spiritual the message is, when, when you hear a preacher, a pastor, talking to you, talking to your heart, from his heart, because it's what the Lord is sending to you via this message in particular. And you know it's very strong because it's expecting changes. The forces of evil are going to attack that type of message. The forces of evil are going to be stronger, attacking strongly, to churches, congregations, pastors, messages that are more spiritual. If it's just entertaining, what's the point? People are already going in the wrong direction. So the enemy of the church, the evil forces, are going to do something like we, we just read here in Ezra 4, 12. And what is that? That some individuals used by the enemy, are going to start putting things against the church and against those pastors because they are trying to do what is right. The enemy will attack the church, the real church, when the church is doing the spiritual work. Like in this case, rebuilding the temple to worship God. Okay, now, the second thing that we see in this story is that there was an arguing. There were arguments between both parties. So Ezra chapter 5 verse 17 tells us about that. And the scripture says that there was another letter. This time was sent to the new king because the, the work was stopped. <laughs> so here is what the letter says. If it pleases the king, please search the official records of the king. See if it is true that King Cyrus gave an order to rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem. And then, sir, please send us a letter to let us know what you have decided to do about this. The argument. Whenever the church is attacked, and especially through legal documents, and they are trying to put authorities against the church. It is up to the church to do something about it. You know, there is an idea out there that we believers, we just accept everything as it is and just, you know, say, well, yeah, it is what it is. A lot of people think that way. But that is not exactly what we should be doing. Imagine in your personal life, whether it's in your neighborhood or in your workplace, in your family, whatever, there are attacks against you. Are you just going to say, yeah, well, it is what it is? I don't think so. You are going to defend yourself. Well, that is exactly what we see here. 
The Jews knew about this letter. The first one stopping the work, rebuilding the temple. There are legal tools sometimes used against the church. There are sometimes legal tools being used by the evil forces against you. And it's up to you if you just take it or you find a way to defend yourself. Now, the Jews, they knew that there were records. They knew it. They wanted the king to evaluate those records because they knew that they were right. Now, King Darius gave an order to search the writings of the kings before him. The writings were kept in Babylon, in the same place the money was kept. A scroll was found in the fortress of Ekbatana, a province of Media. This is what was written on that scroll. Official note. During the first year that Cyrus was king, he gave an order about the temple of God in Jerusalem. The order said, let the temple of God be rebuilt. It will be a place to offer sacrifices. Let its foundations be built. The temple must be 60 cubits high and 60 cubits wide. Its wall will be in layers that have three rows of large stones in one row of wooden timbers. The cost of building the temple must be paid from the king's treasury. Also, the gold and silver things from God's temple must be put back in their places. Nebuchadnezzar took them from the temple in Jerusalem and brought them to Babylon. They must be put back in God's temple. Ezra 6, 1 through 5. So this is what happened. King Darius, now the new king in Babylon area. He received the letter and he decided, I'm going to do an investigation of this thing. This investigation brought tremendous good news for the Jews. But I want you to think for a moment, my friend. The consequences of the legal battle, the legal argument the Jews presented through that letter. What if there was no letter? What if there was no defense? What will happen? Nothing. Rebuilding the temple, rebuilding Jerusalem will never done. Why? Because nobody will argue, nobody will fight. There you go. You are understanding now. It's true. The Israelites were punished by God because they were disobedient and they were practicing idolatry. They forgot God's law. But the Lord always gives a new opportunity to everybody. Always. In this case, the calling came. Zerubbabel is going back. But suddenly, this work is trying to be stopped. And it was stopped for a while. There were legal documents to stop the work. Enemies were attacking Israel. I hope you're understanding. In your life, if you are doing God's will, if you're doing what is right, be sure somebody is going to try, going to be trying to attack you and stop you in doing what is right. Whatever missions the Lord is assigning you to do. And sometimes this attack can become legal. Documents. Well, here is where you need to understand the importance of doing things by the law and doing things right. Knowing that God is sending you to do a task, whether it's rebuilding your own life, rebuilding your family, rebuilding your business, or for believers, rebuilding the church. 
Because right now, the church in general is a big mess. You know that it's absurd that there are churches promoting homosexualism. That's ridiculous. That's anti-biblical. The Lord God will never approve something like that. And many other immoral things, corruption, all these superficial teachings out there, they are not from God. The Lord God wants us to get it right. He knows you are imperfect, I am imperfect, but that doesn't mean that he's just going to give up and say, well, that's my people. No, (laughs) it's not like that. But when you are trying to do the right thing, when preachers try to do the right thing, and, and we don't play games with the public, we don't play games with the church members, preachers that are straightforward with their church members and with the public, people that come and try to see, test the waters, they say, and they notice that the pastor, the preacher, is honest and correct and tries to do what is right all the time, they will say, "Uh, I don't think it's going to work here. We need to find another church. We need to find another pastor that will go along with our ideas. That's wrong. And when they find that type of organization, of course, they are going to be happy and content with each other. Although that doesn't please God. How about that? But when we do what is right, and we pastors preach the Bible as it is, and we say some things are not biblical and people need to stop it, well, guess what is going to happen? the attacks of the enemy, then is when the church and the pastors and everybody that is doing the right thing should use legal support to defend himself. And that is what happened here. So after this investigation, King Darius sent the letter. Ezra 6, verses 6 through 7. It says, I order you to stay away from Jerusalem. Don't bother the workers. Don't try to stop the work on this temple of God. (laughs) That is great news, right? But now, read with me the verse 12, which is the end of the letter. He says, I, Darius, have ordered it. This order must be obeyed quickly and completely. How about that? I love this letter. This is God's victory. And this is the reality of true Christians over and over and over again. Yes, my friend, there are attacks. You try to do the right thing, somebody's going to be against you. You try to persuade everybody to be holy and stop being corrupt. We try to lead people to do what is right in their homes, what is right in their business. Some people are against that. Well, too bad. Too bad, because our job is to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. What happens if there are attacks? Well, we are going to be smart about it, intelligently seeking for legal support, especially biblical support. And then is when we are going to see the victory of God. You know that the kingdom of God always prevails. Always, my friend. Always prevails. That is probably the the thing that I love the most about my Lord. Because I know that even if I die, for whatever reason, whenever that happens, I know His kingdom always prevails. I know what is going to happen to me. I know what is going to happen to every other believer on the face of the earth. We are going to experience a transition to go to the eternity of God by the grace of Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to come to grab me. And in that moment, I'll be directly moved spiritually to the presence of God. 
and I will have a glorified body to live eternally with him. The kingdom of God always prevails. That is wonderful. But in order to prevail, we know there are going to be fights. The cause of this slavery was disobedience. What's going on with so many believers today? They are in slavery to drugs, addictions, to their jobs sometimes, and huge debts that they can't even imagine how to pay. Many wrong things going on in their lives. Many believers are unhappy. They are sad. They worry every single moment of their lives. They don't have any peace. And they are believers. Maybe they smile. Maybe they drive a beautiful vehicle and live in a beautiful home. But what's the cost? Their own lives. They live in misery. They are slaves to this world. And somehow it's God's punishment. Because what the Lord wants us is to put him first. Imagine all these Jews living in slavery again after Egypt. Hundreds of years later, right now, they are again in slavery. Doesn't remind you the story of somebody? <laughs> but the stories were told. And now these Jews say, okay, you know what? It's time for us to leave. It's time for us to live the right way. And they did. When finally, they are now in Jerusalem, praising God. Ezra is taking the leadership in the process of rebuilding worship in Jerusalem. And one of his favorite things was to teach this, the scripture, the chapter 7 of Ezra, verse 10, tells us about Ezra's character. Listen to this. Ezra had always given his time and attention to studying and obeying the law of the Lord. He also loved to teach its rules and commandments to others in Israel. The leadership that we need in the church today is the leadership that comes from the holiness of the scripture in the heart of people that want to fulfill God's vision for the church, for God's people. The holiness that we need to have in our lives is going to happen not for self-discipline. The holiness and sanctification comes as a result of this encounter, constant encounter with the Word of God. I know majority of people don't want to hear about this, but there is somebody out there. And probably that person is you today, my friend. Maybe you are that person why I am talking about this today. Because you are tired of seeing what's going on with the church. You see the games. You see many people that are fake, leaders and followers. You see the materialism. And you see that there is very little holiness in the lives of those people. There are the leaders, the ones with tons of followers and Listeners and etc. They have tremendous platforms. Probably there are millions and millions of people following them. But you barely can hear the message of holiness and sanctification. And why is that? Because they don't have it. And they don't have it because they don't experience the encounter with the Lord God. But maybe you do. Maybe you are the new Ezra in your context. Dedicating time and attention 
to understand while you study the word of the Lord. And while you study the word of the Lord, you teach those commandments to others. That's Ezra. And that's the new leader, the new generation to save the church in the name of God. The miracle happened, my friend. The miracle happened. The temple was rebuilt. The Israelites are back. There is one more step to rebuild the wall, and that is ahead in, in time. Nehemiah is going to come to do that part, but now here in Jerusalem, Ezra is so happy, and he, he says beautiful things in the chapter 7. Let me read for you chapter 7, verse 27 and 28. Listen to this. This is what the Lord says to the, I'm sorry, Ezra says to the Lord. Ezra says, Blessed is the Lord, the God of our ancestors. He put the idea into the king's heart to honor the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. God showed his faithful love to me in front of the king, his advisors, and the king's important officials. The Lord my God was with me, and that gave me courage. I gathered together the leaders of Israel to go with me to Jerusalem. The grace of God came upon Ezra. And I want you to understand that that grace is is supernatural. It's a supernatural thing. It's, It's something amazing. Anointing. The support of God behind leaders that found that grace in the eyes of authorities and other leaders. Like he says here, in front of advisors and the king's important officials. When Ezra felt that, he said, I am encouraged. So, and that's what he did. He started to talk to the leaders of Israel to go with him to Jerusalem. Because courage will come to the heart of anyone who is in the very presence of God. But it's not just the fact that the anointing comes and the supernatural power of God with that person is also Character and integrity in this leader. Ezra got that. He had it. He had this special power from God to lead his people. Because the Lord wanted him to lead his people, to to rebuild the temple, the worship and all that. Ezra did his part. Trusting in God. Doing what was right. You know, my friend, that great stories like this always have great people. Stories like this. Stories like Moses and Joshua and David and Peter, Paul. Great stories always have great people. Great people. Leaders, individuals that believed in God today, and they put effort into what they must do. But I will tell you something that you will be surprised to hear. Great stories also have to do with supporters, advisors, and silent hard workers. Indeed, Moses, Joshua, David, Peter, Paul, Ezra. They were great people. They were great leaders. Think about Martin Luther, for example. Or any of the leaders in the last two, three hundred years bringing revival and the reform to the church. All those good things. Names that you know, names that you have heard, people that made a big influence in our countries. Those individuals, they needed supporters. They needed advisors. And they needed hard workers. 
that always are silent. That amazes me. Amazes me because goes totally against our own nature. Demanding recognition. Demanding rewards. Give me the credit, we say. Where is my name on this project? I want you to say something that I have done. That's our nature. That's totally understandable. But the truth is, some people are going to be like Ezra or Joshua. But majority of people are not going to be like that. Majority of people, of people they just need to be supporters. And there is nothing wrong with that. The introvert, the quiet person, doesn't say much in public. Let Ezra or Joshua shine. But behind scenes, they have the conversation. And you know that conversation. The conversation where Joshua is confronted by the advisors, like Moses was, or David. The conversations that were all the time around Ezra. What do we do now? Zerubbabel. What do we do now? The advisors. The advisor, the advisor person, this uh, sometimes could be a quiet individual that doesn't say much, that approaches the pastor and says, Pastor, what if you consider this and that? Have you thought about this? And suddenly, my friend, those quiet individuals are going to make a big difference in the whole outcome of the project, of the task. And what can we say about the silent hard workers? Those individuals behind scenes. Those individuals that support the leader. And they don't expect any recognition, any rewards, or applaud, anything. They are just like that. They love to support a good cause. With money, with prayers. And these days, supporting online, check, love, comment, share. But more importantly, the work. Because after all, we need to do the work. The tasks are there. Who wants to do work in the church today? I hope you understand. Great stories have great people. Leaders are needed. Ezra's are needed. But Ezra's don't do anything without supporters. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> so now, when Ezra is finishing his job, his task, he prays. And I want you to read with me this part of the prayer. It's in the chapter 9, verses 6 and 15. It's special what Ezra says. He says, My God, I am too ashamed and embarrassed to look at you. I am ashamed because our sins are higher than our heads. Our guilt has reached all the way up to the heavens. Lord God of Israel, you are good and you still have let some of us live. Yes, we are guilty. And because of our guilt, not one of us should be allowed to stand in front of you. 
My friend, Ezra did the right thing. But he was talking not just for himself. He was talking in behalf of the whole group of Israelites. Somehow he identified himself with the sins of everybody else. Because he knew that he needed grace from God. And that is fantastic. Looking and listening to a leader that is willing to say, I am ashamed, Lord. I'm embarrassed to look at you. Listening to my pastor, to my leaders, praying with so much humility encourages me. Is that what we hear today? The acknowledgement of our sins before God? Ezra set the example here. And now you, my friend, have the same opportunity by saying the same thing. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit, friend. That is what the Holy Spirit does in you. Gives you conviction of being a sinner. Failing. So what is right is to surrender and say, Lord, please come to my heart. That is why we need to remember the scripture. Like John 3.16. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not be lost but have eternal life. This passage connected with Isaiah 53, Jesus was being punished for what we did. He was crushed because of our guilt. He took the punishment we deserved, and this brought us peace. We were healed because of his pain. This passage is connected, talking about the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, my friend. Do you understand? The one who paid the price to save you. That's beautiful. I hope you received the blessing from God. Next Sunday, my friend, I'll be talking to you about Paul and what happened during those three days while he was blind. That will be October 22nd. But the following Sunday, I'll be talking about the importance of being David. I hope you will be here with us in Victory Church, in person or online. This was the message, Ezra. Share it with your friends. And until I see you next time, I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not ruin the produce of your land and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of armies. We invite you to follow our 24-7 broadcast. You can do it by going to the video link, which is giantv.magiancarlo.com or audio, victoryradio.us 24-7 of programming available for you. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Gion TV app. With the Gion TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vitutoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. 
He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. So you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You are Even when I feel that I'm ready Ready to quit and give up Ready to throw the towel of my life away It is on those days when I realize How weak and fool I can be Considering my situation I cry out where are you, God? You promised me to be with me here all the time. You said that I will not be alone. You promised me that you will be with me no matter what, no matter what. And I know you are mine. Here with me all the time.
give me life, it's your light. Some days I felt ready to sink, but every time you rescued me, my own tears became the ink to write the prayers of my me. Disappointed you quite many times. I failed, I messed up big time. Acting right was not my style. No more sad days, now all is bright. The sun is shining with its light I feel the wind blowing on my skin I feel your love coming, you're my spring The winter is over, no more snow My heart you filled with your love now in my home I hear the birds I see the kids playing, boys and girls Can anyone hear the explosion? Because my life is in commotion I feel that I am falling down Whoever saves me must have a crown Flower needs the sun, like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain. Come and take my pain away. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart. If only there was somebody who sees that I'm not nobody. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart. If only there was somebody who sees that I'm not nobody. Sing to me a love song again. Fly me on. Your airplane, be my shining star tonight. I need you badly in my life. It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past, I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me, because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. 
I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life. A life that is absolutely profound, real, and true. I feel alive. You make me fly. I'm in the clouds. You make me alive. This is my night. I'm gonna fight. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.